Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, hi, with Shono here, about to give you another Injustice 2 video. And this video we're... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, hi, with Shono here, about to give you another Injustice 2 video. And this video we will be unlocking Soul Stealer Dr. Fate with today's recharges as well as the new little bit of cycle that you get for the two free recharges they give you every day. So, what was the screenshot about a couple seconds ago? Well, maximum heroic attempts reached. So, if you have, like, millions of gems from hacking or you've just been stockpiling thousands of gems, the most amount of gems that you can actually spend recharging heroic battles is 150, which is four times a day. So, it's not really that costly. It's really not going to cost you that much in gems, especially if you're doing... 25 minute operations and as you can see right there i'm currently at 29 out of 160 enraged bane fragments and i believe i've been doing this since saturday so if you can do the math it's probably gonna be about four to five weeks before i actually get enraged bane but i'm really looking forward to that next up we have 35 minutes before the soul stealer dr fate pips refresh so if we have to clip this video in two parts say i'm missing a couple fragments and i don't feel like refreshing because I don't want to recharge the first battle. I've already recharged the third battle once, and then I decided to just farm Arena and get Soul Stealer Dr. Fate tomorrow. So, we're going to be doing that before we start our Arena cycle today. So, the opponent has 41,772 threat. Obviously, Predator Batman, I found, has worked really well. They have significantly nerfed Soul Stealer Dr. Fate since the last time, and we have to use two agility classes. So, you can use double Catwoman, that would be perfectly fine. The Joker is also very viable. Because for nine, up to nine seconds, if you have it five stars, he's going to be stunned and unable to do anything. So you can unload him. So, because Predator Batman's in operations, we're actually going to use Emerald Green Lantern as our third character. So the Joker and Catwoman do have dot effects. And we're going to show you right now how much easier this fight really is. Mythic Wonder Woman is also a really solid choice if you have her. Because you're going to get the damage boost quite a bit once you knock the first guy out. And we can actually showcase that off in the next fight too. So, it's going to take a couple seconds to deal with these goons because they are a little bit stronger. Obviously, Mythic Wonder Woman is of the Might class, so she will be able to deal with them pretty well. Soul Stealer Dr. Fate is of the Magic class. So, when I was doing this yesterday, I was using Predator and Batman. And literally two stun bombs would basically get rid of Soul Stealer Dr. Fate. That's how strong it is. And you definitely want to... Eliminate these guys quickly or have the goons use their specials so Dr. Fate doesn't start with a super move. So he uses up the specials. That's really good. We're not at the four minute mark yet. So the slasher inmate about to go down. Let's try to get rid of him before the tag out. So there goes the one inmate. Second inmate's going to come in. So we're going to armor up just in case he does a damage move. Now the heal is going to be a little bit annoying still, but as you can see, it's only healing for about 330. It's not healing for like 1500. So the regeneration is a lot easier to deal with. Obviously, Soul Stealer Dr. Fate can still do some damage, but it's not as bad as it was. Trust me, it was really bad before. And like even a really powerful card with like 30,000 threat would get shredded pretty quickly. Here we're going to do a dot damage, and we're going to tag into the Joker because he does have a super move. So he is going to swap the health of the Joker, which is really bad. But at least we get it out of the way. So again, optimally, I would still have Predator Batman because I think he's one of the best offensive cards in the game. And that does take out the Joker. So we have nine seconds to unload on him and build up a combo. So you can see the dot's doing decent work. Let's unload another one and get Green Lantern. So Soul Stealer Dr. Fate is down. He cannot use a super move because of the super group. So we're in the clear, and that's a victory. So as you can see, Soul Stealer Dr. Fate is a little bit easier than before, but it's not something that you're just going to walk in and say, hey, I'm going to destroy it. No, there's still a little bit of strategy behind it. So let's show Route B with Mythic Wonder Woman. Horrific Scarecrow might be solid too because it'll make the specials cost two more. Obviously, I really don't have a good agility class. I think that's the weakest one that I have. Mostly because I haven't focused on uh, Blade Master Robin like I should be doing. But that's because I've been trying to work on Predator Batman when I do get him up to five stars in like five more weeks. 
we'll have a really good position on getting him over 60,000 threat and then trying to challenge LQ Persona for number one in arena. I think I need a couple more people at like 50, 60,000 threat before I can try to do that. But we can definitely secure two really easily. But if we're only farming about 100,000 arena right now in an hour, that's a little bit tough. Especially when you're working a 40 hour job and you're working from behind. So there you can see Mythic Wonder Woman working really well. Try her out if you have her five stars. It probably will destroy Soul Steel or Dr. Fate. So we're at 129 out of 160 fragments. Let's start recharging the second battle. So it's still important, even if you get the card, to actually uh, purchase your completions. If you're worried about gems, don't do more than two. But if you're spending 300 gems on the second and third battles... So you can get an additional 40 to 50 fragments. I think that's totally worth it. Once you get into the 200 gem range, it's not so much. It really only matters if it's going to be the difference between unlocking a card or getting a promotion. I am going to be gemming all of the uh, recharges. That way I can bring you guys higher level content faster. So I will be doing all the gem recharges. And we're kind of doing this all live. No edits for unlocking Soul Steel Dr. Fate as much as I could. So there you can see Soul Steel and Dr. Fate gets absolutely shredded by Mythic Wonder Woman. Do not underestimate her because she's going to build up a lot of the damage boosts from the previous guys. At 135 fragments, we only need 25 more to actually get the card. And we still have three total recharges to do. So we could do that before we get our new pips. And I would love to do that so I could showcase it all in one video and get it up a little bit earlier. Because I believe the... Arena or the Soul Taker Dr. Fate pips recharge at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, not noon like I had originally thought. So I don't know if my clock is still set to CST or if for some reason iOS is an hour off. I'm not really sure. But I checked at 12 noon, the pips didn't recharge, and yeah. Mythic Wonder Woman makes this easy mode. Obviously, Soul Stealer Dr. Fate heals, but I don't really give a shit. It's not strong enough in the second difficulty. So props to Netherrealm for balancing this on the fly without a patch. We only get two fragments there for 137, so it's not looking good to get the card before the pips refresh at one. But we still have three total purchases, so if we can get 31, 32 fragments, I'll recharge the first battle. But generally, it's not worth doing. You can very rarely get three fragments out of the first battle. But again, I don't recommend it. Because it's kind of a waste of gems just for two fragments. But again, your mileage may vary. If it's a difference between getting the card or getting a promotion, then it's totally worth it. Here we're going to use our special one. And here you can see that Soul Stealer Dr. Fate taking 4,000 damage. And my Mythic Wonder Woman does not have a maxed out special one. I think it's only like level 15 or something like that. So we're at 140 out of 160 fragments. We have two recharges in the second battle, one recharge in the third battle. So let's keep going. We are definitely guaranteed to get Soul Stealer Dr. Fate when the pips recharge at 1 p.m. So generally, if you refresh the... First and, or the second and third battles twice through the three-day cycle, you get about 80 fragments with the increased schedule of getting two challenges versus one. That just means that you're going to get 80 more fragments, 80 to 100 fragments altogether at the expense of gems. So is that another realm's way of saying, hey, let's make more money from our customers, or is it a way for free-to-play players to get it a little more? We're at 142 fragments there, so still a little ways off. So we need to get 18 fragments out of these couple recharges, and we'll be able to get it. So you can see that Mythic Wonder Woman is definitely better than Emerald Green Lantern in the case where she gets knockouts. In general use, I think Emerald Green Lantern is better than Mythic Wonder Woman, but if you get that quick knockout, Mythic Wonder Woman just turns up to over 9,000 really quick. Because every enemy knocked out gives your Wonder Woman 50% attack. You don't steal 50% attack from the opponent. I don't think they actually coded that in right, so bad wording by Netherrealm. 15 hit combo takes out half a Soul Stealer Dr. Fate's health. Your final fate 
so that's a little bit unfortunate. We need to do some damage to Soul Stealer Dr. Fate before we lose too many more damage buffs. Or else we're going to have to use Catwoman to finish them off. There's another heal. That's really bad. So let's start getting in Catwoman and just dotting them up. Because if I'm not mistaken, dots do uh, retard the regeneration. And let's just get... Take another heal. Holy crap. Get out of that heal. Let's actually save Mythic Wonder Woman in case we have to cheese out with a super move. Because it looks like he's just you. spamming special twos. So there's another dot from Catwoman. That one doing a lot more damage. Let's dot. Get the Joker. And down goes Soul Stealer Dr. Fate. So yeah, it's a little bit tougher on the third difficulty. Definitely manageable. We're at 146, so... The chances of getting Soul Stealer Dr. Fate before the pips recharge at 1 p.m. is pretty low. We need to get like 7 or 8 fragments. If we get like 4, there's no chance in hell. So some of you guys are asking why am I uh, spending so many gems to actually get the card. Well, I want to show it off to you guys because I'm not seeing anybody else with the card. So it shows a lot of people are not spending gem pip recharges to get cards and... You really should, because it's more cards that you get in Arena. And once we actually get Soul Stealer Dr. Fate, I'm also going to level all of his gear up to 10. Hopefully we get some decent gear properties and not crap. But we'll have to see on that. And the Special 3 does a decent amount of damage to Soul Stealer Dr. Fate. So I really feel that it's better to use a Special 3 against Soul Stealer Dr. Fate instead of a Special 1, because that's going to get amplified. So we're at 150. So as long as we get at least six fragments from the third recharge of the second battle, I will spend some gems on the first battle and get it early. So we have to hope that we get eight fragments here, or at least six. It is possible we can get four and get absolutely shit on, but the range is like two to six on the second battle. You can get like... Three to eight on the third battle, and you can get one to three on the first battle. Slasher inmate goes down, brawler inmate comes in, and now we're gonna slash away Soul Stealer Doctor Fate, and takes out like seventy percent of his health on the second battle. But yeah, special three in most situations is way better in the special two. And there we get two fragments. Fuck you, Nether Realm. I wanted six. And now, now watch, we get another two and we can't actually do it till 1 o'clock because I refuse to refresh the first battle. It's too much. I really think the gems need to be progressive, like 25, 50, 75 in the first battle, 50, 100, 150 in the second battle, and 100, 200, 300 in the third battle. I think that would make a little more sense than 50, 100, 200 across the board because you get way less in the first battle. It's not worth it. Soul Stealer Dr. Fate gets wrecked. How many fragments are we going to get? Fuck you, Nether Realm. Hopefully we can get a couple fights that give us two fragments so I only have to refresh this twice. So those guys go down really quick, and Soul Stealer Dr. Fate has, like, no health on the first difficulty. Now, you can get up to three fragments. Unfortunately, we only get one. So now watch, I get two fragments one time, and then I get one the rest, and I'd be left at 159 out of 160. We're going to refresh one more time. And I'm not doing 200. Not on the first battle. It's not worth it for two fragments. I'll try 100. Actually, no, I won't. Fuck it. We'll see you guys at 1 o'clock. All right, so we are back. It is currently 12.59 p.m. Eastern Time. And our pips are set to refresh momentarily. Now, I'm not sure if you get the pips back exactly, kind of like in the arena or daily uh, rewards when we refresh. But we're going to take a quick look at it. We're going to hang out. For a minute and let's see what we actually get and we can use that for research within a YouTube video.
All right, so it's currently 1 o'clock, and the pips haven't refreshed on their own, so let's close and exit out, and let's see if they do. Not yet. It does say 1 day, 23 hours. So, All right, so once you close the game out, your pips will return. Let's go into the third battle so we can try to get this in one fight and get it out of the way. So... In order to get your pips back, you have to actually force close the game. You can't just exit out of menu. So it's kind of like the um, day of the reward. Sometimes you have to refresh your game just to get it to show up. Just like for Injustice 2 console. So deal with the slasher inmate. Let's get rid of him. We'll deal with the other slasher inmate. So hopefully we can get to seven bars. Before we get rid of the last one, so we can get a nice damage boost on Soul Stealer Dr. Fate. So we're going to take a little bit of damage there. I'm not too worried. And now let's start working up a combo. He might be able to do a special one, and he does. So we lose one of the damage boosts. That still does some nice damage, though. And Soul Stealer Dr. Fate at this point eliminated. So will we get enough fragments or will we have to do a second fight? Yes, we do. We got 8 fragments, 164 out of 160. That is our 38th character. So let's go into the roster, just because I like that whole splash screen of unlocking somebody. So, Alright, so we can unlock Soul Stealer Dr. Fate right now. Now let's do that. Alright, so... 1,828 threat. An agent of order, Kent Nelson, is able to swap health with his opponent upon performing a super move. Fate also allows his teammates to heal from his break of life ability. So each time you upgrade the passive, as I've expected, a 5% chance to improve on the super move. So 1,872. Upgrading it again gives you 1,917 threat, so it's like 40 upgrade. So now we're going to go and equip all of the gear. It doesn't really matter what you put on him. Just put gear on. And we're going to shatter all of the extras. We're also going to put all of the gear up to level 10 as soon as we equip everything. So we're going to level up Soul Stealer Dr. Fate. I should have enough gear fragments to put all of his gear up to level 10. And I'd be really pissed if I shattered something on accident. So like usual, you get defense on the headpiece. You get health on both the chest plate and the legs. And you get um, crit chance from the weapon. So generally if you've done all of the pips you should have each of the gear items especially if you refresh. So with all the gear equipped at level 1 2603 threat including the passive upgrades. So we're going to start with the gear upgrades. We're going to upgrade every gear item up to level 10 and if we get a shitty gear property like crit resistance stun resistance fast attack chance except for Robin and anybody that has a passive synergize, we're going to re-roll it. So we get lethal attack chance. That's shit. I don't really like crit damage, but we'll take it for now, just in case we get shitty modifiers on other gear and we have to change them out. Crit damage is better than nothing. And I believe we actually got the good modifier for crit damage, because when you get more than 0.1 or 0.2%, I actually think that when you get the modifier that equals to your chance, you actually got the better roll, so... Uh, 0.3 is like 18% crit damage at level 60, so I don't know. We'll see if we keep it. But I'm pretty sure that we got the better modifier. And 18% crit damage times 5 is actually a lot. Times 15, actually. Because you can have 5 gear slots times 5. So there's defense. That's actually a good one. I'll keep that. It's not the best defense roll. The best defense roll would give you 0.2 per rank, but again, we're not fishing for, like, best modifiers. And you're going to need a lot of gear reforged. I hope that Netherrealm in the future does increase the rarity of the gear rerolls, because I feel it's a little bit rare at the moment and a little bit too hard to get. So it's roughly about 900 uh, things to upgrade a gear from level 1 to level 10. Obviously, the best one is level 20 when you unlock that second gear slot, and then... We got more defense, that's fine. It's actually really good to have a lot of defense, at least in your first gear property, because if you're stacking defense, you're not going to take much damage later on, and 
That's what prevents you from getting cheesed up by suit moves by having a lot of defense. So, got 3% defense on that. Let's go to the boots. And having defense on Soul Stealer Dr. Fate might not be horrible because if he's harder to knock out, it means you're more likely to get off a super move and you can kind of manipulate how to do it. Now, I'm not sure if this Dr. Fate has the range attack. We got health, so we've actually gotten some decent modifiers that we really haven't had to reroll. And the second bonus is 10% power generation, 5% attack for 3 of 5, and 10% health if you have all of the gear items. Alright, so we have three gear items. We're at 4,500 threat, and this is at a level 1. So let's see what gear modifier we get out of this one. So far, we've actually gotten some decent modifiers. Two defense. We had to reroll once in the crit damage, and then we had and then we got health. So we got more defense. Wow, that's a lot of defense. And we didn't get the good modifier again, but three defensive gear items plus a helmet. That's actually really good. So expect the threat level hit about 12, 13,000 once we get up to like level 35 or 40. So that's pretty good. So 4,657 threat. Let's spend some XP capsules after we unlock these talents. So we get a shit talent. We get a shit talent. And we get a shit talent. Let's re-roll until we don't get shit talents. That's not really much better. That's okay. Need a little bit of crit to actually make use of it though. 4% health. There we go. Alright, so we really don't have that much crit. So crit damage is actually kind of bad. Uh, let's see if we can get 4% crit chance. I really don't want to spend too many credits though, so let's do like one more. So I do want to upgrade it. 4% defense. We'll take that. It'll actually scale really nicely. So now let's spend all of our arcane capsules. And you can see the threat just jolt up really quick. So we're at 12,558 with a level 36. That actually puts us in the average to above average category. 837 damage, 5,790 health, and 19% defense. That's pretty good for only having level 10 gear and 4% defense on a modifier. So what you guys have actually been waiting for. Actually, let's upgrade some specials too. And we actually haven't checked them out to see what they are. So 12,000 threat does put him kind of in the upper half, and that looks sweet. So um, Blood Price is a special one. Break of Life is the one I'm really interested in because this is the one that's supposed to be able to heal the damage you do. So let's actually get this up to, like, level 10. Let's actually get all the specials up to level 10 just to start. I'll probably focus on Break of Life a little bit more. I have been putting all my upgrades currently into Predator Batman. His special 2 is already level 45. And the special 1 is like 40, and then I'm going to do the special 3 after that. So that's basically what I've been using my upgrades for. And there's one of our operations from Emerald Green Lantern. So we're going to get a few more credits as well. And actually, that might be all of them. So before we actually do any battles, I'm going to show that off as well. I'll probably spend the extra credits in Break of Life. And you do get minor threat upgrades. As you see, 12,747 versus 12,759. It's not a lot. But even if you upgrade a special 10 times, you're going to get a couple hundred threat. So, if it's a difference between having, say, 2,000 threat versus 2,100, and to guarantee you matchups that give you uh, 250 score, you might as well take it. It's not bad. So, we're getting this up to level 10. And then we're going to get these guys out of operations, and we're going to spend the rest of our credits upgrading that break of life, because that's the ability I'm really curious about. There's no other character in the game that has a heal. Nice fragments there. We're actually close to a four-star uh, Master Thief Catwoman. I believe we have about 165 shards, maybe 170. So that'll be a nice upgrade. We're at 158 out of 200 shards. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the campaign. Let's do something like Swamp Thing. And let's do it on Heroic, obviously. So what we're going to do... As a regular matchup, let's throw in uh, Predator, not too weak, Predator Batman, and let's double down on Dr. Fate. I don't know if this is a good idea, and we're going to have to try to do it with one person having a super move. So we only need to get to eight bars of power, and I really think the best candidate for that is Swamp Thing. But we have to get him down on health, Dr. Fate, and not eliminate him. 
So let's see if we can make do with this. Let's actually start with Dr. Fate after we tag in Predator Batman. And let's see if we can actually do this with this team. Obviously, specials costing 8 is going to be really good. And Predator Batman stun costing 2. So we want the target for the suit move to be Swamp Thing, but we want uh, Soul Stealer Dr. Fate take a little damage. There's Emerald Green Lantern, so the Guardians would be really good, because you cannot get knocked out from that. There's the super move. Green Lanterns All right, there we go. That's perfect. So when Soul Stealer Dr. Fate comes back in, he's just going to wipe out whoever comes in, which I want it to be Swamp Thing. So let's just bomb out Emerald Green Lantern. Green Arrow comes in. That's exactly what we want. So we're going to have to switch out a little bit just to get up to 8 bars of power. So let's do that between Dr. Fate and Soul Stealer Dr. Fate. And that's going to do a little bit of damage. So we're almost at... He can actually heal up. That's perfectly fine. Watch this cheesy combo. That is just fucking overpowered as hell. You can definitely use that just by himself. Even if he's level 1 and cheese out fights really easily. 7,703 damage for the victory in our first test fight. There's a three star. 3,653 credits, 1,040 XP, and we got 59 fragments out of 80 for Swamp Thing and a level 13 Green Arrow Bow. So, there you can see some of the cool factors with uh, Soul Stealer Dr. Fate. That's the best use for him. You can actually use him to take out a high threat target. Like, for example, an armored Superman with zero problems. You can also use it to take out an Emerald Green Lantern. You can basically use it for whatever. So, now that we know that that fight actually worked out really well, let's try just playing normal. Let's try to use some of Soul Stealer Dr. Fate specials. Let's let uh, Predator Batman take a little damage. And let's see if we can get some healing. Because I'm not sure exactly how strong it is. It's supposed to work on the entire team, so I'm really curious to see how that works. You only need two to use it, so. You will not succeed. Me ideas There's the heal. Arrow. Green Arrow doing a lot of damage, so. I don't know exactly. It looks like Predator Batman did heal up a little bit. I saw it was like 232, so it wasn't anything ridiculous. They're swap things, so I really want to get up to eight bars again and just cheese them out a second time in a row. And I want to heal Soul Stealer Dr. Fate. So I don't know if this is enough to get rid of him because I wasn't quite as low. But he did like 7,000 damage on the last one. Now you can only super move once per fight. But sometimes that's all you need. So Swamp Thing is gone. Now we just have to cycle some power and finish these other ones up. We actually bomb out Emerald Green Lantern. Not quite at two bars, but we're okay with that. But yeah, Soul Stealer Dr. Fate. And that really... Shows that the heal is not really that potent, although my Dr. Fate isn't that high level. So Predator Batman gains a level 46, 1,040 XP, 3,653 credits, and another Fragments for Swap Thing. Alright, so now let's go to a fight in Chapter 4, Heroic. Let's do the fight that has Cyborg Fragments. And the reason for that is I feel that's a fight that's a little bit easier for Dr. Fate to actually be used in a primary defense attack roll like Predator Batman is doing all the work other than the swap super roof. I want to show off Dr. Fate in regular combat and let's see how he does. Let's start by cycling a tag just to chip these guys down. Now armor is a really potent ability from Green Lantern because you cannot be comboed up. That move actually does some decent damage. Now, I also wonder if it can hit multiple opponents, too. So for some reason, the special 2 costs 3, so costing 5 doesn't seem to make it very good. You've seen Lead Rain wipes out Dr. Fate. That's really dangerous. So, yeah, Soul Stealer Dr. Fate, outside of the super move, I don't think is going to be a game changer, although his one special costing 1 is not bad. Predator Batman, obviously broken as hell when your special is like level 45. Computer has no chance in hell. But there you can see Soul Stealer Dr. Fate a little bit weak yet. But we still managed to pull out the victory and 
Although we did get Wonder Woman's bracers, they did hot fix it, so you're not guaranteed to get it. 680 XP, 1,560 credits. It was cool to see you battle Reno. Thank you for that. All right, so let's try one more fight. Hopefully, Dr. Fate won't go down as easily. And let's just try to spam his special one. We didn't really get a good chance to showcase him off because he got lead rained out really early. So, yeah. Soul Stealer Dr. Fate does have a little bit of work to do. We obviously have to continue working on his gear and maybe getting some better passes, but if we can get him leveled up, he could be pretty good. So again, we're going to start with Predator Batman just to cycle a tag. But yeah, Silver Green Lantern is actually a pretty underrated card because while you have the shield, you cannot be interrupted by any damage and your combos will not reset. So you can definitely use that to your advantage. Even 25% health in higher threat battles is a big deal. Especially when you combine it with characters that have defense. So that takes out his armor. So it doesn't look like it does that much to Green Lantern. But again, most of the threat is from Predator Batman, not Soul Stealer Dr. Fate. But you can see the special one kind of chipping away. If Dr. Fate doesn't go down, I'm going to swap Harley Quinn and just reset. That's going to get rid of her. So yeah, I'm not going to say Soul Stealer Dr. Fate is a horrible card, however, you might have better options for actual raw damage. You can definitely use that to cheese people out. Let's get uh, Dr. Fate taking a lot of damage. Let's get uh, Soul Stealer Dr. Fate out. I want to try to heal a little bit. So let's get his power up. Let's just get rid of Green Lantern. Hope you got more in the We're going to take that. That does a decent amount of damage, and it takes out some power. So, does it actually heal teammates, or do you have to tag him in for that? Green Lantern is gone. It looks like... no. But with it costing three, we can get a little bit of heal from this while he's knocked out. It is a decent amount of a heal, but you still need him pretty strong. So yeah, it seems like... and that heal is only like level like 13 or 14 or something like that, so... I think the heal could be pretty good later on. So, so obviously, if Dr. Fate's specials cost two less and the heal costs three, I think that's a little bit more usable than it costing five. I really think that the damage slash heal should cost four. I think it's a little bit, but in the sense that it actually heals your guys up and you can kind of tag out and control who gets the heal. Yeah, the heal's only level 10. So... At this level, you would get 25, you'd get like 5 more health a tick. So if you had it up to like level 30, you'd get 100 more health a tick. So if you're healing for like 350 and you have 5,790 health, that's actually a decent heal. So I think that if you had to heal pretty much maxed out or close to max, it would be really potent and really powerful, especially if it costs 3. But... Uh, what do you think of the team that I just used? Double Dr. Fate and Predator Batman. Do you guys think it could carry you really well in Arena? Or do you think that Emerald Green Lantern is a little bit better? Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. But Soul Stealer Dr. Fate swapping health with a super move is obviously really busted. And it's really positive, high value if your Dr. Fate takes damage. You obviously don't want to swap health when Dr. Fate is full and your health is low on your opponent. Because you're going to take his health and he's going to be harder to knock out. So if you like this video, unlocking Soul Stealer Dr. Fate. This is going to be a little longer video because I wanted to show unlocking him through doing regular battles. Please give this video a like rating, comment, subscribe. Share this video amongst your friends and as a favor. Check out my other Injustice 2 videos playlist, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch, which are all Hollywood Shono. And now to grind some arena. Have a wonderful day, kids. www.youtube.com slash Hollywood Shono. Subscribe, bitches! Thank <laughs> you.